In this lesson, we will construct a residual plot and use that plot to determine whether we have a good least squared regression model or not. The data that we'll use to construct our least squared regression line is given in the table. The data is the heat index or the apparent temperature versus the relative humidity in an environment whose actual temperature is 85 degrees Fahrenheit. We want to try and predict the heat index from the relative humidity in the room. In order to construct a residual plot, you must first perform the least squared regression. Once you have the least squared regression, you are going to use the least squared regression to find predicted values. These predicted values will allow you to find the residuals. There will be n residuals if you have n data pairs. Each residual is equal to the observed response minus the predicted response. Once you have all the residuals, then you do a residual plot, which is a scatter plot of the residuals versus the x data values. After performing the least squared regression, we get a regression model of heat index predicted equals 75.95 plus .277 times the relative humidity. Now we need to use this model to find the residuals. Here is a table of the data. The relative humidity is our x data. The heat index is our response variable. For each data pair, we need to find the fitted value and the residual. How do we find the fitted value for the first data pair? We put our x value into our regression equation. So we put a relative humidity of 0 into our regression equation and our fitted value is 75.95. Now, how do we get our residual? Our residual is the actual data value minus the fitted value. And we see that our first residual is 2.05. Calculating our second fitted value we plug 10% for our relative humidity into our regression equation. Plugging 10 in for the relative humidity gives us a fitted value of 78.72, which gives us a residual of 80 minus 78.72, which gives us a residual of 1.28. We continue this process for each of the other data pairs and we see that the predicted or the fitted value when the relative humidity is 100 percent plug in 100 multiply it by 0.277 and add 75.95 gives us a fitted value of 103 degrees point six 103.65 degrees Fahrenheit which gives us a residual of 4.35 if we added up all the residuals, would they sum to zero like we know they should? I will let you check that. When you do sum these residuals, you get close to zero. The reason we don't get zero is because our residuals, our fitted values have been rounded, our residuals have been rounded. Um, without the rounding, the residuals would sum to zero. With the rounding, it's close to zero, but not exactly equal to zero. Now we are ready for the residual plot. Now we just need to plot the residuals versus the x data values. Carrying out the scatter plot, we get the following residual plot. Again, the x axis contains our x data values, and the y axis cont cont contains the residual. So look, let's look at our first data point. When the relative humidity is 0, our residual is 2.05. That's that point right there. When the relative humidity is 10%, our residual is 1.28. That's that data value there. Let's look at the last data value, data pair. When we have 100% humidity, our residual is 4.35. 100% humidity, there's our residual at 4.35. When do we know we have a good model what we look for in the residual plot is no pattern. Do we see that in our residual plot? The answer is no. There is a clear pattern. 
for relative humidities less than 30 percent and relative humidities greater than 90 percent, our least squared regression model underestimated the true heat index. For relative humidities between 30 and 80 percent, our least squared regression model overestimated the true heat index. We see a pattern in our residual plot. It means that our regression model that we got up here is not a good model to model a linear relationship between the relative humidity and heat index. Even though there was a high correlation for this data, which means a high R squared value, because there was a pattern in our residual plot, our model is not a good model to use to model this data. Let's now use the calculator to do the residual plot for us. What's the first thing we must do? We must do a least squared regression. Our data is contained in list 1 and list 2. List 1 contains the relative humidity and list 2 contains the corresponding heat index. Let's do the least squared regression. Go to STAT, over to CALC, down to number 8. We want to do a linear regression. Our model will be A plus BX. The X data is in list 1, comma. Our Y data is in list 2. And we're ready to do the regression. We do the regression, and here's our regression line. A is 75.95. Our slope coefficient is 0.2779. Now we want to do the residual plot. Each time your calculator does a least squared regression, it stores the residuals in a list. Let's look. If we go to the list, all our named lists that we have in the calculator, if we go down to R, we have R-E-S-I-D, residual. Every time that you do a least squared regression, this list is updated with the residuals from your last regression you did on the calculator. So if we want to do a scatter plot, let's go to second stat plot, plot number one. We want a scatter plot. Our x data is in list one, so that's fine. We want our y axis to be the residual, so we need to go get that list. Go to second stat, go down to the r's, and we have resig, hit enter. So we are doing a scatter plot. The x-axis will be our x data. The y-axis will be our residuals from our regression. Do zoom 9, and we have our residual plot. Again, our model is underestimating the true heat index. It is overestimating the true heat index. And then again, for high relative humidities, the model underestimates. Because there is a pattern, we should not use this model as the modeling of relative humidity versus heat index.